to now for the final question from the specimen paper for the P3 International A-Level exam. Question number nine it says a curve has equation x equals sine y minus cosine y over cosine y plus sine y and y is uh, between minus pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. Okay, show that the equation of the curve can be written as x equals minus cosine 2y over 1 plus sine 2y. So we have to use some sort of uh, trig identities to transform this into this. Okay, now, uh, one of the things that you'll notice here is, first of all, when you have a question like this, uh, to prove something is equal to something else, is identical to something else, you're never going to be able to see the whole picture in front of you in one go. It's very difficult to see exactly how it's going to work out. But you have to just go step by step and just think of it logically until you get to the point where you can see how it's going to work. All right. So what, what I suggest that you do here is what I would do actually first of all notice that this is these are double angles and these are single angles. Okay. And we have our double angle formulae which are based upon these over here. Okay, so what I'll first do is I'll say, okay, I know that the sine of 2y, which is what I have to end up with over here, is equal to 2 sine y cosine y. This formula isn't given to you, but if you didn't know it, you could derive it from this. Like this could be the sine of y plus y. That will be the sine of 2y. It's sine y cosine y plus cosine y sine y, which is 2 sine y cosine y. And... Here we've got sine y minus cosine y, and here we've got cosine 2y. Now I know that cosine of 2y is the same as, if I made this y here and y there, all right, y plus y, you'll have cosine y cosine y, which is cosine squared y, and you're going to have a minus, and you're going to have sine y sine y, which is sine squared y. So we're kind of um, trying to get these looking like that, okay? now. In this question, it's better for you to go this way, because it's show that this can be written as that. So it's better, I guess, to go this way. Although if you go the other way, I'm sure that would still be okay. But I'm kind of looking at the way it should end up and trying to see how I can link them together. So what I could do here is I could say, okay, uh, this sine y minus cosine y has got something that see the top of this is cosine two y. So it's going to have something to do with this, right? So if I put minus cosine 2y, so minus cosine squared y minus sine squared y. Okay, now how would I get that from that? Okay, that's the difference of squares. So this would be the same as sine squared y minus cosine squared y, isn't it? Okay, all right, so sine squared y minus cosine squared y, I would get that if I do sine y minus cosine y times sine y plus cosine y. That multiplied together will give me sine y minus cosine y, and that would be sine squared y minus cosine squared y. Okay, so I can make that the numerator. I can take this and multiply by sine y plus cosine y, so I have to do the same thing on the denominator. So that's this is like sine y plus cosine y times sine y plus cosine y. All right, so it looks like we're getting somewhere. So let's see how this turns out. So I start off with x equals sine y minus cosine y over, I'll call it sine y plus cosine y, same as it. And I've basically, basically what I've done to this, I've multiplied both the top and bottom by sine y plus cosine y. So it's the same fraction. So I haven't changed the fraction. Let me try and need to up my writing here. So now I've got x equals, this will give me sine squared y minus cosine squared y. And this will give me, if I expand it, I'll get sine squared y plus 2 sine y. Okay, cosine y, so that kind of works out, plus cosine squared y. Okay, so sine squared y minus cosine squared y is the same as saying minus cosine squared y minus sine squared y. 
the bracket minus outside the bracket. So I'm taking out a minus one. And I've got this in that form there. And this is like saying sine squared y plus cosine squared y plus and two sine y cosine y is the same as sine two y from the double angle formula. And cosine squared minus sine squared y is equal to so this is minus this is cosine two y the minus from out here over and now sine squared y plus cosine squared y is one plus sine two y and that's what we had to prove I think that's exactly what I had to prove yeah so we've done it all right so basically I kind of went halfway I worked I worked from this this way backwards a bit by thinking about the double angle formula because I see that they have to go from single angles to double angles and then I kind of worked out how that would become that you you multiply this by sine y plus cosine y so therefore you multiply the denominator and then it all worked out okay so there's part A um, done now part B as for part B it says hence or otherwise show that dx dy equals 2 over 1 plus sine 2y so we got to differentiate y with respect to x or in fact x with respect to y we've got to differentiate x with respect to y so we've got to differentiate this with respect to y now here we have a quotient of two different functions so we're going to use the quotient rule so here we have u is equal to minus cosine 2y and v is equal to 1 plus sine of 2y so u dash this time it's with respect to y if you differentiate cosine you get minus sine so you're going to get minus minus which is plus and you're going to get sine 2y which you multiply by 2 because the differential of what's inside the function so you're going to get 2 sine 2y and if you differentiate v with respect to y the differential of sine of something is positive cosine of the same thing but then you have a function inside the function so you multiply by 2 because the differential of 2y with respect to y is 2. So now with the quotient rule we're going to find now dx dy here dx dy you're going to go this way as I explained in the earlier question where he's going I always go this way I always at u and u dash and then next to on the right v and v dash and always going this direction so you're going to have 1 plus sine 2y times sine 2y so you're going to have 2 times sine 2y bracket 1 plus sine 2y minus and then you're going to go this way these two multiplied which will be minus and a minus will give you plus that will be 2 cosine squared 2y okay 2 cosine squared 2y and I multiply those together and divided by v squared v squared is 1 plus sine 2y all squared okay so let, let's now uh, try to simplify what we've got here so if I simplify this let me multiply this bracket first so I have 2 sine 2y plus 2 sine squared 2y plus 2 cosine squared 2y over 1 plus sine 2y all squared okay that's dx dy okay what I can see here is the, these two if I can take out 2 as common so I have 2 sine of 2y and I have plus 2 times sine squared 2y plus 2 cosine squared 2y over 1 plus sine of 2y all squared so sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of the same angle will equal 1 and I've left a 2 here it shouldn't be written in I've taken out 2 is common so the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the same angle will equal 1 we know that this is going to become 2 sine of 2y plus 2 times 1 which is 2 over 1 plus sine 2y all squared and we can take out a common factor here of 2 so you have 2 times um, I can write it as how do they want the answer yeah write it as 1 plus 
2 times 1 plus sine 2y over 1 plus sine 2y all squared and one of those will cancel out so you're left with 2 over 1 plus sine of 2y is dx dy that's the answer to part b okay so it's just using the quotient rule and then simplifying okay using some identities and cancelling out common factors and so on. okay so there we have the answer to part b dx dy 2 over 1 plus sine 2y yeah okay now on to part c now it says at a point p x y lies on the curve given that p dy dx is a quarter and y is less than zero find the exact coordinates of p okay so now we want to find we know that dy dx is equal equals a quarter what we found is dx dy so dy dx is going to be 1 plus sine of 2y divided by 2 that's dy dx and we know that dy dx is equal to a quarter so we got 1 plus sine of 2y over 2 is equal to a quarter therefore 1 plus sine of 2y is equal to a half and multiply both sides by 2 so we can say that the sine of 2y is equal to a half minus 1 which is minus a half now we know that the values of y are between minus pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 that's where we've got to get our solutions so if we find we got we got dealing with 2y here so this has to become 2y so this is going to be multiplied by 2 between minus pi over 2 multiplied by 2 up to 3 pi over 2 okay so now we're going to find the inverse sine of minus a half okay the inverse sine of minus a half in radians so we've got inverse sine of minus a half okay that will give us minus pi over six minus pi over six okay now Minus pi over 6 is within the range, okay, because we've got to go from minus pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Minus pi over 6 is, is, is within the range, because, yeah, minus pi over 6. Um, the other solution is going to be pi minus this, pi minus minus pi over 6. For, for sine, it's always 180 or pi minus the angle you've got to give you the other angle. So you're going to do pi minus this answer, so you're going to have pi minus this answer, that gives you 7 pi over 6. Okay, 7 pi over 6. Okay. Now we know that at P, Y is less than 0. Okay, so those are the two solutions, I think, in the range according to the solution of this equation. Let's have a look. 7 pi over 6, is that in the range? 3 pi over 2? Um, yeah, how do we check? 7 pi over 6. And you've got 3 pi over 2, which is times 3, 6 times 3, 9 pi over 6. Yes, in the range. So they're both in the range. If I go any further, I'll be outside of the range. If I add another um, 2 pi to this, I'll be outside of the range. If I add 2 pi to this, I'll also be outside of the range. So we're basically, those are the two solutions. So y is equal to minus pi over 12 and 7 pi over 12. But we know that y is less than 0. Okay, so we want to choose, we know that y is less than 0. Therefore, we choose y equals minus pi over 12. Okay, and it says find the coordinates, so we need the x-coordinate. Now, we know x is equal to this. Okay, let me just take this down here so I don't have to rewrite it. So I know that the x is equal to this. So once we find y, we can find what x is. Okay, so x, therefore, is going to be minus cosine of 2y of 2 times minus pi over 12 which is minus pi over 6 over 1 plus the sine of 2 times minus pi over 12 so I can just stick that in my calculator and get my answer so I'm going to have minus uh, fractions minus cosine 
Now that's going to give you minus pi over 6. Put minus pi over 6. Okay, so that's the answer. That That's the numerator. Minus cosine of pi over 6 divided by, and you've got 1 plus the sine of, now that's minus pi over 6 as well, isn't it? Minus pi over 6. So you're going to have minus pi over 6. Okay, and that should give us some x value, which is minus root 3. So x equals minus root 3. So the coordinates of the points of the point that we're looking for is minus root 3 for the x value and minus pi over 12 for the y value. Those are the coordinates of the point P. Okay, so dy dx is equal to y is less than 0. So we found the coordinates of P. There's the answer for that. And there we have completed this paper. It's all finished now. That's question number 9 and the specimen paper for P3 is now complete. Okay, so thank you for watching.